Okay. Um, for today's class, we will be uh, looking into different aspects of uh, T cell survival. Um, and uh, what this means uh, is uh, uh, what are the pathways involved in T cell survival and uh, which involve obviously T cell death because survival and, and death are sort of uh, interlinked. Uh, so, why is this aspect important? Um, if we just uh, look at the slides uh, and uh, see uh, the importance of regulation of uh, immune cell numbers. So, once uh, T cells get activated, uh, they increase their cell numbers. Um, well, uh, for that matter, B cells or, or uh, um, T cells, once uh, um, lymphocytes get activated, their numbers increase and that uh, those numbers have to be controlled. Uh, and uh, um, the reason for this in the, in the, in the previous classes too, I, I, I informed you that if, if uh, upon activation the T cell numbers continue to be high, it results in immunopathological uh, problems for the host. And uh, uh, so, therefore, their numbers need to be controlled. Now, here there are two scenarios um, which is what I have shown over here. You have activated T cells and for example, if there is less death, that means the cells that ought to be removed after activation, they have done their job, they now need to be removed. If they are not removed, then it results in autoimmunity and we will see examples of this. So, for example, uh, in humans or in people with uh, mutations in FAS, uh, uh, FASL, you have increased numbers of activated T cells and it causes major problems. So, it causes autoimmune um, uh, like uh, uh, syndromes in in uh, these uh, um, in these mice and and, uh, and people, we will be discussing some of that aspect. On the other hand, if there is enhanced death, um, and then it results in immunodeficiency. So uh, so the the cell numbers of immune cells need to be tightly controlled, um, and uh, these involve uh, uh, death pathways, uh, and uh, it is important for us to understand what this is uh, all about. Okay, now, in general, a cell death is a phenomena that is not linked only to immune cells. Uh, all uh, our body uh, uh, cells uh, undergo homeostasis and their uh, cell numbers are regulated. For for So, all the cells, uh, they are born, they live for some time, they do their jobs and then uh, they get uh, aged and so they need to be uh, they need to, um, to be removed. Um, and how does this uh, process occur? It occurs by a process uh, um, known uh, uh, by, by different ways and uh, cell death, uh, there are two main types. One in which you have programmed cell death, which means it is controlled, the cell death uh, is, is controlled. And uh, there are two main types of PCD or uh, programmed cell death. The first one is apoptosis uh, and, this, and the second one is autophagy. Now, in case of apoptosis, you have the cells shrink. Uh, at the fragment, but the plasma membrane integrity is maintained. That is a very important highlight and that is what distinguishes it from necrosis, where you have rupture of the plasma membrane, so you have leakage of the intracellular contents and it causes necrotic conditions which in which result in inflammation. And we had uh, discussed uh, in, in the class before um, that uh, whenever you have inflammatory conditions, it is more of a war zone uh, like situation uh, where you know there is pus, uh, you have uh, cell infiltration, you have a lot of other problems and, and apoptosis is, is, is a way of we are removing cells that are not required in a highly regulated manner. So, for example, in the thymus where thymic selection takes place and very few of the cells uh, are selected, majority of the cells are, are, are not selected uh, this uh, and, and they undergo a process of cell death. Um, if, you, if you look at the thymus, you do not see pus, you do not see inflammation, you have major cells, uh, you have a large percentage of cells being removed, but everything uh, looks fine because it is occurring in a very regulated manner and this is, uh, this is the process of apoptosis. The other uh, the important aspect about apoptosis is that you have permeabilization of the outer mitochondrial membrane. And again, this sort of differentiates from the, with that necrosis, where you have opening of the pore in the inner mitochondrial membrane, as a result of which you have a loss in the mitochondrial uh, permeability transition pore. And uh, as a consequence of this, there is reduction in the electrical potential across the inner membrane, uh, um, um, uh, inner mitochondrial membrane. Now, due to this, <laughs> there is severe loss in the generation of ATP, which you understand uh, and which I am sure you are familiar with is uh, the energy currency of cells. Now, following this, there is rupture of uh, the outer mem um, mitochondrial membrane. So, in necrosis, you have uh, what is, uh, uh, what happens is you have uh, a plasma membrane uh, rupture, uh, a leakage of this uh, and uh, it results in um, um, in uh, inflammation. That is a very important aspect that uh, you need to be aware of. The other aspect uh, 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 is in, in, uh, in programmed cell death, 
is autophagy. Now, in autophagy results due to uh, starvation, loss uh, of growth factors and it is characterized by increase in number of double membranes containing vacuoles. Uh, finer differences in uh, these three different types will be uh, discussed uh, um, in subsequent slides. Okay. Now, apoptosis. Now, what is apoptosis? Uh, it is again efficient method uh, devised by nature for a turnover of cells and these are points that we had uh, discussed uh, thymic selection and in fact, you have several billion human cells that die every day, uh, but, but uh, you know as I said they died in such uh, and they are died and the cellular turnover is highly regulated that uh, we are uh, you know that we, we do not even realize that you have such high cell uh, cellular numbers occurring. Now, this process is, uh, is present, uh, um, is evolutionary um, conserved and it is present in higher in, in worms. Uh, in fact, that is where it was discovered, um, the, the genes that are important in, in apoptosis, higher eukaryotes, etcetera. Now, uh, apoptotic cells undergo chromatic compaction and that is uh, very important uh, because it gives the nucleus a particular morphology and if you are very good at looking at apoptotic cells, you will be able to pick it out. Um, you have um, chromatin uh, compaction and condensation, the apoptotic bodies are formed and which are phagocyte uh, by macrophages. Um, the, as I said, one of the hallmarks of apoptosis is that you have cell death in the absence of inflammation. Uh, <coughs> apoptosis plays a very important uh, role in uh, down modulating immune responses. So, once you have uh, act T cell activation, you would need to uh, bring, uh, bring these down. Lymphocyte maturation, repertoire selection in, in, the, in the thymus for example, uh, you have you know thymic differentiation, selection um, and uh, CTL uh, and cytotoxic uh, T lymphocyte uh, action. Um, uh, so, these are important aspects that will be covered. Okay. On the other hand, we discuss the necrosis where the cell disintegrates due to rupture of the plasma membrane, they release their intercellular contents and it results in inflammation. In other words, um, as necrosis is somewhat of a messy situation, whereas um, um, apoptosis is a much more highly regulated uh, method for cellular turnover. Okay. This, is, this slide, uh, it gives us a little um, uh, um, we will we'll look into some finer differences between apoptosis, necrosis and autophagy. So, um, and, and uh, just a little bit about autophagy, what happens in autophagy is basically the cells sort of eat themselves up. So, autophagy that is what it means self eating. So, that is what happens and it is usually under conditions of, of starvation and you have these giant vacuoles that develop because that you know they are the basically the cellular contents are being eaten up uh, inside these vacuoles. Um, now, uh, now what are some of the hallmarks of apoptosis? Um, now, you have nuclear fragmentation. In fact, uh, um, this uh, is, uh, is, is, uh, um, is, is important and in fact, what you have is intranucleosomal DNA fragmentation. So, actually the ladders that one gets, there is a particular uh, ladder pattern that is got and because that is telling you about the sites where uh, you know these uh, intranucleosomal cuts are, are generated. Um, so, when you isolate um, DNA from, uh, from apoptotic cells, there is a particular pattern that is got and that is because it it is the intranucleosomal uh, nucle cuts that are, that are seen. So, as mentioned you have uh, chromatin uh, condensation, you have apoptotic bodies without plasma membrane breakdown that is the key um, and intranucleosomal uh, DNA fragmentation. So, the pluses are ones um, which I have listed to uh, so that you can highlight and, and uh, take a look at them. Necrosis you have the key one is where you have plasma membrane breakdown and that is the problem and that is why the intracellular contents rupture and it results in a uh, inflammatory um, uh, situation. Now, autophagy is characterized by, uh, uh, by uh, the sensitivity to uh, uh, 3 methyl uh, adenine which is an inhibitor of autophagosome, so which is shown over here. Um, so, that is an important aspect. So, you can differentiate these uh, different processes by using uh, different inhibitors, by looking at the morphology of cells and by finally, seeing what the outcome is. So, if you have an inflammatory like situation, then you know probably there is a lot of necrosis going on. Okay. So, um, we will discuss uh, some of the basic mechanisms of, uh, <coughs> of program cell death. Um, the key enzymes that are involved in program cell death um, are activation of caspases. Now, what are caspases? Caspases are nothing but these are cysteine proteases that cleave after aspartate, which, which is to say the active site 
um, uh, amino acid uh, is cysteine and the substrate specificity is after aspartate. So, in, in terms of protein cleavage. So, that is how they have got their name um, is uh, depending on their active site enzyme and what is the substrate preference or where do they, uh, where do they preferentially uh, cleave um, because these are after all proteases. Now, there are several um, uh, mammalian um, caspases um, and you pro perhaps have you know some of them are redundant, but by and large you can categorize them into two types. One is they have initiator um, caspases and uh, then you have uh, effector caspases. Now, initiator caspases are the key ones that, that started off um, and out of which two are really important uh, for the purpose of this, uh, uh, for this uh, talk. One is caspase 8 which is part of the extrinsic pathway and other is caspase 9 which gets activated mainly through the intrinsic pathway. Um, so, these the two uh, pathways converge and then activate uh, effector pathways which will do uh, with the, the residual job. Um, so, uh, what, what this means is that uh, they would initiate different pathways um, where they would cleave different cellular contents so that the cells undergo uh, cell death. Um, and one of which uh, is one of the important functions of, uh, of uh, the roles of these caspase is uh, to initiate ones such that the you have permeabilization of mitochondria. Now, mitochondria this permeabilization of the outer membrane uh, uh, of um, the mitochondrial uh, membrane is a very key step. It is almost a step by which once that is done you cannot go back. Okay. So, that is a very important aspect and there is a close link between the integrity of the mitochondria and uh, cell death. It is something that we will be uh, seeing um, uh, subsequently. Um, just to give you an example, um, in the caspase 9 uh, uh, knockout uh, mice, you have the double positive thymocytes are protected from glucocorticoids and geno, uh, toxic drugs. Now, what ha happens uh, usually is uh, once you give it glucocorticoids, the double positive thymocytes are highly sensitive to it. But however, if they do not like caspase, uh, uh, if they if they do not, uh, uh, if, um, uh, if these mice do not have caspase 9, then um, uh, glucocorticoids cannot function and that is what uh, it shows. It shows that the glucocorticoid function is mainly through the caspase 9 pathway um, in, in thymocytes. Okay. This is uh, just a sort of a revision of uh, something that we had uh, covered. Um, and uh, the in uh, the the caspases the Z3 is the C elegans uh, ortholog and which is uh, I had I had said that C elegans was the system where uh, this pathway was uh, discovered um, and one of the other important aspect is that uh, caspases are synthesized as proenzyme so as proenzymes they are ineffective so it is only after cleavage uh, that uh, um, the the uh, pro part is removed that they become active and hence the regulation of caspases or regulation of caspase activation is a very important aspect. Okay. Um, so, these are activated uh, caspases are activated upon aggregation or cleavage to form the mature form. So, it is a mature form that is going to be um, active and once again um, examples of uh, the initiator caspases are caspase 8 and 9 which is something that we will be seeing fairly soon and you have caspase uh, 3 as the effector this is an example over here as the effector caspases. Now, um, now caspases uh, caspase activation require a stimuli and this is something that we will uh, we will discuss. Um, so, the stimuli can be essentially of two different forms one is a receptor activation and that is true through the extrinsic pathway where you have signals from outside um, usually um, you know binding of the fast fast cell um, uh, fast uh, receptor to the fast cell ligand or activation of the TNF alpha receptor or the, um, the tumor necrosis factor receptor um, is the that is part of the extrinsic pathway um, and once you have this you have activation of caspase especially caspase 8 and then you have the activation of the downstream ones. The other way is to activate uh, through the intrinsic pathway by which you have usually cellular stress or the responses which generate uh, cell stress and because of the problems in cell stress uh, this is translated down and this results in uh, increase in ROS, uh, it increase in activation of uh, caspases especially caspase 9 which ultimately feeds down into the mitochondria and then uh, results in cellular uh, death. Mm. Okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, apoptosis. Uh, now, um, in in once you have the mitochondrial pathway and you have this entire uh, cellular bit going down, um, you have different processes occurring. And so, what this uh, slide is uh, is tells us is about the different processes that occur. Um, so, how does a, actually a cell die? You activate the caspases and uh, 
then you have cell death. So, how is it the activation of caspases finally leads to cell death because there are so many events occurring. So, here are some of the events um, that I have listed um, that uh, you ought to be uh, familiar uh, with. The first part is that um, cleavage of ICAT. Now, what ICAT is the inhibitor of caspase activated DNAs. Now, usually um, what happens is this inhibitor it, uh, it prevents the action of uh, this DNAs. So, uh, once you have cleavage of ICAT, so, uh, so uh, now what happens is the DNA is, is, is now free to um, function and it results in, um, in, in cleavage of uh, DNA. Now, activation of nucleases including CAD or caspase activated DNAs. So, again you know they will, they will, uh, they will uh, cause nicks into DNA, cause DNA damage and it will essentially kill the cell. Uh, chromatin condensation uh, which is something that was uh, mentioned, oligonucleosomal um, uh, DNA degradation, disassembly of cell structures nuclear lamin. So, the nuclear, the nuclear envelope part um, is composed of proteins known as lamins, uh, a large uh, number of them and so those get, uh, uh, those are, uh, are some of the substrates of these caspases as the result of which the, you know, um, the, the, the nuclear um, envelope is no longer um, a, as an integrated whole body, um, whole cellular organelle, it starts leaking out. So, you know things are, are ultimately you know uh, um, uh, that is and, and that is part of the process uh, that occurs during apoptosis and you have cleavage of cytoskeletal proteins, uh, fodrin, gelsolin and it results in loss in cell shape. So, uh, in, in you can see there are different processes occurring, first is DNA is damaged. Okay, the genomic DNA is damaged because of activation of these DNAs. All right. Um, the second uh, way is that, and this affects chromatin condensation. Um, apart from the mitochondrial uh, um, problems, uh, where you have outermembrane uh, permeabilization, you have then the nuclear lamins are affected. Um, and uh, and as a result of which the the nuclear integrity is lost hmm? and also you have problems with cytoskeletal proteins which affect cell sh cell shape so you see uh, once you initiate the pathway you have lot of other processes occurring um, which uh, will certainly affect the way uh, the cell function and the cell shape and finally it would sort of get internalized into apoptotic bodies which are then um, which are then removed by uh, different mechanisms and that is again something that we will be uh, studying at the last part of this lecture. Okay. So, um, how does one uh, study apoptotic uh, uh, cells? Okay. Um, so, there are different ways uh, of studying apoptotic cells. Um, if the first one is microscopy and I have said uh, that because of this condensation of the nucleus, these uh, cells have classic features, they have darkly stained uh, nuclei especially using hex staining um, and um, if you are uh, if, if you are if you are very good at, uh, at looking at apoptotic cells, this is uh, certainly a way uh, for you to uh, sort of uh, uh, tell that. You have uh, the other common ways uh, of uh, detection is by uh, by doing what's known as a tunnel assay, and that's something that we will uh, we will see. Now, what happens over here? There are nicks made, as was uh, shown uh, in the previous slides. There are nicks made in in the um, in the in the DNA, and because of these nicks, you have some the free uh, three prime ends are there. And what is done is you label the free three prime ends in the uh, the different nicks uh, um, uh, present in DNA with a DUTP, and the DUTP is labeled with in a particular way, so you can detect. So, but DUTBT gets incorporated into this uh, NIX only in the presence of a particular enzyme known as um, uh, the is uh, known as terminal deoxy uh, transferase um, TDT, uh, and so um, you can then uh, then look at the incorporation of DTT into these NICs and that is uh, known as the tunnel assay. The other uh, ways uh, that are um, that you could look at, you can do gel electrophoresis and look at DNA ladder, which, which is what I said that you can look at this 180 base pair intervals, and that is caused due to the inter -nucle um, nucleosomal DNA cleavage. Um, then you have flow cytometry. You have uh, you can look at the externalization of phosphatidylserine. Um, now, what in this case what happens is phosphatidylserine is usually present inside uh, the plasma membrane. Now, however, apoptotic cells they flip it. Um, in apoptotic cells, phosphatidylserine is is flipped on the outside. Now, why is it flipped? Because apoptotic cells, once they are dying, they they uh, they show some signs, and these signs uh, are known as eat me flags. 
So, these are take these eat me fly eggs are a sign for other cells to sort of uh, ingest uh, these apoptotic uh, uh, cells. And because of the flippage of phosphatidyl serine, there is a particular molecule known as NXN5 which binds to this. So, you can have a fluorescently labeled um, uh, molecule NXN5 uh, for example, and it will bind to it. So, now what you can do is you can distinguish um, your healthy cells from your apoptotic cells. You can get some good numbers on it using uh, flow cytometry. Um, the other mechanism is to look at DNA fragmentation using probidium iodide. Now, in this case what happens is that uh, once uh, you have uh, uh, because of the NICs, uh, the genomic um, um, DNA integrity is lost and you have hypodiploidy. So, in a, in a, in a cellular population you can look uh, at the number of cells with hypodiploidy and as um, um, as there is increased apoptosis or cell death you have increase in hypodiploidy. So, there are different ways of uh, detecting apoptotic cells. I think it is important for uh, students to be a little familiar with the techniques to, to detect uh, apoptosis and, and that is what was shown of here. There are different methods. We will discuss a little bit uh, one in a slightly greater detail which is uh, the tunnel assay which is what uh, is shown over here. You have these DNA uh, strands with breaks that are generated and in these breaks you can uh, incorporate um, DUTP and X is uh, X stands for um, a labeled um, um, a molecule and so for example, DUTP labeled to biotin and you come in with uh, antibiotin um, uh, an antibody against biotin conjugated to FITC. So, you can see um, you know um, these, these cells undergoing um, uh, cell death. And so, what happens is DUTP gets incorporated here in the presence of uh, uh, terminal um, uh, deoxyridyl uh, transferase TDT and uh, so tunnel stands for terminal deoxynucleotide transferase DUTP. NIC end labeling because what is happening is only the 3 prime end gets incorporated with it. So, you if you have a, a lot of NICs over here only you know these this label will be incorporated in certain parts and will show up in a cell and that uh, is a readout that the cell is undergoing um, a death. And what is shown over here the presence of NICs in DNA can be detected uh, by the incorporation of this. So, just a small one uh, example of how uh, apoptotic cells can be detected. Okay. Now, um, as I mentioned there are uh, two main pathways uh, for the initiation of apoptosis. The first one is the intrinsic on mitochondrial uh, um, way in which which is regulated by the mitochondria and over here in this case you have release of cytochrome C. Uh, <coughs> the other pathway um, and then you have formation of the apoptosome. Um, so, one is the mitochondrial and that is because of, uh, of uh, once the cells are under, under stress and they feel it is now time for us to uh, die and uh, then you have activation of this intrinsic uh, pathway. The other, uh, the other pathway that uh, is, uh, uh, is seen is the ex extrinsic or the death receptor pathway and this is usually done uh, upon activation by ligation of the death receptors FAS and TNF uh, alpha or, or and or TNF alpha receptor family. Now, um, the two pathways interact uh, uh, at the during the activation of the effector caspases. Um, now, um, as, as mentioned uh, previously caspases are present in pro form they need to be activated and so the signals for activation come from these different two different pathways uh, which is the intrinsic and the extrinsic. Extrinsic, extrinsic because it needs a signal from, from, uh, from the outside uh, to, to trigger. Um, and uh, intrinsic uh, because um, it is cell stress uh, 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 generated. So, it is something you know maybe it is a ER stress or uh, high amounts of reactive oxygen species or nitrogen species so on so forth. Okay. So, this is a pathway A and we will go over it somewhat slowly. So, this is the cell surface receptor mediated pathway and this goes through the FAS or the TNF, uh, um, uh, TNF receptor. And over here what happens is you have uh, uh, clustering once the receptors come together um, um, FAS is the receptor and uh, FAS L is induced uh, uh, under some conditions and the when once you have binding of FAS L with FAS um, you have uh, this activation of this particular pathway. And what is shown over here is you have clustering of the death domains. So, you have the receptors coming together as a result of which you know uh, parts of the intracellular uh, domains contain the death domain and you have clustering of the death domains. Now, what this will do is it will recruit adapter molecules and, uh, and these adapters are for example, the FAS associated death domain containing proteins or the TNF receptor associated death domain containing uh, proteins. Ultimately, what this uh, results in is you have oligomerization 
of death effector domains. That is the important part. Now, these uh, oligomerization of these death effector domains uh, constitutes a complex known as the death inducing signaling complex known or a disc. So, once, once you have this, the, what this does is it results in activation of caspase 8. Remember, pro-caspase 8 is now converted into um, the active or mature caspase 8. Once you have this, you have uh, activation of the effector caspases which will ultimately finally lead to death. Now, there are different pathways that are involved in it. Uh, we are just discussing the initial parts. So, we want to be make sure that you have you understand this particular pathway or uh, the, the cell surface intrinsic pathway in very clear terms. Okay? Uh, it mainly goes through the fast uh, TNF uh, receptor and you have the clustering of the death domains and then which will recruit adapters. So, um, and ultimately you have formation of the death inducing signaling complex which activates caspase 8. That is why I said caspase 8, caspase 9 are the important ones. The other ones, the other uh, pathway is the stress uh, pathway or <laughs> the mitochondrial. <coughs> Over here, because of uh, endogenous stress or um, or uh, or any other forms of stress, the cell uh, cell uh, and, and high amounts of let's say calcium uh, or uh, reactive oxygen intermediates, um, you have release of cytochrome C from the mitochondria. What happens over here? Cytochrome C, um, the DATP, now binds to APF1, and this trimeric complex is known as the apoptosome. Now, apoptosome results in activation of caspase 9, and once you have this, you have activation again of the effector caspases, resulting in cell death. So, you have two pathways, uh, which uh, uh, ultimately the final outcome is is cell death. But there are two different pathways that uh, are involved in in this. Okay. And this is shown in a little bit of a different slide over here, which is showing the FAST and the TNF uh, receptor pathway, which results in activation of caspase 8. And uh, um, it is it's shown over here, it goes on over here. And this is the intrinsic pathway, where you have deprivation of growth factors, uh, um, activation of this um, pro-apoptotic uh, um, BCL family proteins is something that we will discuss. Ultimately, what happens is you have cytochrome C release and then your formation of what is shown over here as the apoptosome and then activation of the effector uh, pathways. And you can see over here that you have mitochondrial uh, fragmentation. What is also shown in this slide and I would like you to pay attention to it, we will deal with it a little bit later, is caspase 8 apart from activating the effector caspase 3 which is shown over here also results in activation of this molecule known as BID. Okay? What BID does, it goes on activates backs and back from here and uh, which also uh, result in uh, the release of cytochrome C from the mitochondria. So, BID is an important uh, molecule um, in the sense that it links the two pathways. So, once you activate FAS or TNF receptor, you have activation of caspase 8 and that uh, has, a path, has a pathway which will, uh, which will uh, target uh, uh, the effector caspases directly, but it also has a mechanism to uh, of activating other proteins and for example, BID which will go on and turn on um, the other uh, pathway which results in um, in, uh, in, in excess uh, um, uh, secretion of cytochrome C from the mitochondria and over here you can see mitochondrial fragmentation and which will certainly contribute to cell death. So, you have the two pathways and uh, uh, one example was also shown of BID which sort of links the two pathways. And of course, as mentioned previously, caspase 8 is important for the extrinsic one and the intrinsic one is caspase uh, 9. Okay. So, uh, in terms of T cell death, uh, there are two main forms and again students need to be a little bit familiar uh, with it. The first is, uh, a, uh, is autonomous T cell death or known as ACAD. And what happens over here, uh, ACAD is a form where, um, where T cells undergo death. Uh, because of the growth factor deprivation. So, for example, they have um, you know they have been activated, um, they have produced IL-2, but with time IL-2 amounts have dropped and once these IL-2 amounts drop, then they undergo death because it sort of naturally takes care of the fact that uh, um, you know T cells have activated, they are no longer getting activated perhaps because the antigen is no longer present and so now it is time to, uh, time to die and so maybe because of lack of uh, growth factors, these undergo death. 
now um, the uh, in the uh, uh, in the autonomous uh, uh, T cell uh, death pathway he, um, the ratio of the anti and the pro apoptotic uh, BCL2 uh, family members uh, is the most important. So, the ratio is important because it determines whether the cells will undergo cell uh, whether it will uh, the ratio of the pro versus apoptotic whether we will determine whether the cell finally undergoes cell death or survives. So, that is an important pathway and it is the intrinsic or the mitochondrial uh, pathway which plays an important role in the autonomous uh, T cell pathway. In the active in the activation induced cell, uh, cell death pathway the key pathway over here is activation of fast fast cell and it is the ex extrinsic pathway which is playing an important role uh, over here. Okay, um, and uh, this is uh, this slide shows you about the different uh, the TNF receptor family proteins uh, CD95 is the FAS and you have different family members you can see similar um, uh, you know uh, similarities in organization of uh, the cysteine rich uh, domains uh, and the DD domains uh, or uh, the death domains um, which are important um, in recruiting uh, the other proteins and forming this, uh, this, uh, this complex uh, um, uh, or the disc. Okay. So, as was mentioned uh, the important proteins over here uh, are FAS and FASL. Now, FAS is the receptor, FASL is induced usually upon activation and the binding of these two result in, um, in, in, in cell death. Okay. Um, it is also important uh, that primary T cells uh, express low levels of a caspase 8 uh, like inhibitory protein known as FLIP. Um, and therefore, primary T cells often do not die by a, uh, by a caspase dependent mechanism, often their death is caspase independent. Um, and upon activation what happens, uh, um, IL-2 is produced and this is after you know 4 to 5 days of uh, being activated in the presence of IL-2 uh, and subsequently only at a later stage you have lowering of uh, flys levels um, and you have increase. Uh, in uh, um, in uh, in in uh, fast L and which then will now undergo a death by um, AICD. So the initial primary uh, uh, primary T cells uh, uh, usually uh, die in a caspase independent manner, and whereas it's only the activated cells at a later stage they they die um, in uh, by AICD, and that's because it takes time for the induction of fast L, uh, and so you have now the interaction of fast fast L, which results in this, and this is again um, something that is important. Uh, <coughs> Now, as was mentioned over here, uh, in the autonomous T cell pathway, um, it is due to uh, lowering of BCL2, BCL XL, and these are the two main anti apoptotic proteins BCL2, BCL XL, and uh, you have increased mitochondrial outer membrane permeabilization, generation of mitochondrial uh, ROS, um, and uh, so which is, which is an important aspect. Um, now, IL2 enhances fast cell expression and decreases the expression of FLIP. And this is again important because again uh, th this part of subsequent T cell activation probably relies mainly on the AICD, but the initial T cell activation death pathways are probably going through the autonomous T cell pathway. So one needs to uh, one needs to understand these uh, differences again. Okay, um, so uh, a little bit more about fast fast cell apoptosis. Um, in response to antigenic st stimulation, peripheral T cells will expand. Now, these these uh, majority of these T uh, cells need to be eliminated, except for a small pool of memory T cells. Now, upon uh, repeated um, antigenic stimulation and upon uh, you know expression of uh, high amounts of IL two, um, IL two induces the expression of fast L, and so then you have the AICD pathway which is turned on, and then you eliminate these cells. Okay. So now the question is, what happens? if you do not have uh, uh, FAS or FASL or you have mutations which affect the oligomerization or, uh, or uh, activation of these receptors. So, that you cannot you can't activate uh, the caspase 8 or the intrinsic uh, or the extrinsic pathway. Um, so, uh, what was, what was uh, showed is that uh, uh, this leads uh, to uh, a disease known as autoimmune lymphoproliferative uh, syndrome. And originally, it was known as the Canel uh, Smith uh, syndrome. So, what happens over here is that you have enlargement of lymphoid organs, of especially of lymph, uh, lymph uh, and, and spleen, and you have uh, and liver, so uh, hepatomegaly. So, um, the, the cells that usually die are not dying through this pathway, as a result of which they are accumulating. 
because they are accumulating the 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 these the sizes of these lymphoid organs and other organs uh, increase because you have accumulation of these lymphoid uh, cells and uh, they cause what is known as autoimmune like um, syndrome um, in patients also it causes thrombocytopenia which means that there is internal bleeding due to low number of platelets so usually the the platelets are usually able to you know take care of internal bleeding but however if there is excessive internal bleeding um, though the number of uh, platelets are are already taking care of it so in the circulation there are very low numbers of platelets which can be uh, you know life threatening now in mice um, mutations in fas are known as lpr and lpr stands for lymphoproliferative and fas more mutation in fas cell is known as um, gld or generalized lymphoproliferative um, uh, disease so um, and these mice in fact develop arthritis um, immune complexes and they have immune complex um, uh, you know nephritis which means there is a problem with the kidney function that is because you have accumulation of these antigen antibody um, uh, complexes which do not get filtered easily it clogs up uh, the kidneys and it affects the filtration um, and which is what uh, results in inflammation and uh, problems in uh, kidney function. You also have autoimmune um, or auto antibody production. So, you can see um, mutations in fast fast cell result in uh, you know in, in, in autoimmune disease and these are these are key examples um, of this. Um, it is a very important aspect because one needs to ask if, if a particular protein or a set of proteins is playing an important role what happens in terms of in vivo function, what happens in terms of disease. So, this aspect is, uh, is, uh, is key. Okay. So, um, uh, a little bit about now, now that we talked about the, the surface receptor and ligands, uh, we ought to um, look in a little bit into the BCL2 family proteins because I said the ratios of the pro-apoptotic and the anti-apoptotic BCL, uh, BCL family members play important roles. So, so one must be a little bit familiar uh, with this. So, these are a large member of um, 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 B BCL uh, family proteins and BCL stands for B cell um, uh, leukemia because they were discovered um, you know um, um, from, uh, from, uh, from, from that source and now there are several family members that are known um, and the BCL2 is homologous to Z9 which is present in C elegans. Um, now, what is, uh, what is interesting is all have the BH3 domain or the BCL2 homology domain and the BH3 is the pro apoptotic domain exposed on activation. Now, they act as uh, dimers often hetero or homodimers, uh, pro apoptotic uh, dimers for example, BACs increases mitochondrial permeability, the anti apoptotic members BCL2, BCL, XL form dimers with pro apoptotic and you know and try and sort of inactivate them. So, um, it is important to understand the way uh, the BCL2 members function. Now, if you uh, just look at uh, the organization, you have uh, them you know they have membrane anchor. Uh, uh, you have pore, pore uh, domains that are important in pore formation you and in regulation, but you can see the BH3 domains are conserved in all these uh, different family members and the main anti apoptotic ones are BCL2, BCL, XL. Um, I, I would just like to uh, remind you that uh, one of the mechanisms during T cell activation that we studied was uh, the mechanism by which CD28 acts as a co-stimulator of T cell activation. Now, not only does CD28 enhance uh, cytokines, uh, IL-2 production and other cytokines, it also increases um, uh, uh, the, uh, the BCL2 and BCL XL. So, it acts at two ways, one is it enhances T cell activation, it also enhances T cell survival and so the key members uh, of uh, the pro survival family members are BCL2, BCL XL. Um, um, on the other hand, the pro-apoptotic members uh, are shown over here. You have uh, BACs, BAC, uh, BOC, uh, so on, BID um, and BIM and these are all important uh, family members which, which, have different, um, uh, which have different functions because there are so, so many of them. Some of them have redundant functions and some of them are specific for certain situations and knockouts uh, in mice uh, have shown their roles in uh, different situations. Uh, okay. so, um, uh, some of the important aspects uh, over here, I had, I had said that the mitochondria is clearly a very important player uh, um, and uh, you have the mitochondrial outer membrane permeabilization, um, it is a very important and this permeabilization is controlled by BCL family members. So, for example, BCL2, BCL XL, they oppose um, the permeabilization of uh, the mitochondria and therefore are pro survival. So, they help in survival. 
and whereas backs and back enhance uh, um, uh, enhance uh, cell death. So, if you over express BCL2 or BCL XL in cells usually they, they tend to survive, um, they tend to survive better, they are more uh, uh, they are able to resist stress better um, and unfortunately because of this they also play a role in cancers because um, in, in cells where you have higher expression of BCL2 or BCL XL uh, they would tend to survive more um, and it might uh, um, it, it might sort of help in, in, in tumor cell survival. So, you have this aspect also that one needs to um, uh, one needs to um, uh, uh, understand. Um, on the other hand you have BCL2 uh, um, so, B, so, BCL2 and BCL XL they inhibit apoptosis they block the release of cytochrome C uh, from the mitochondria. The, you have BID uh, which uh, is cleaved by caspase 8 and it translocates to, as was shown um, in that diagram it, it translocates to the mitochondria to trigger um, the cytochrome uh, C release um, um, from uh, the mitochondria. Um, and uh, I had said that BID is the common factor between the intrinsic and the extrinsic uh, pathways. Okay. Now, backs and back these are again uh, pro apoptotic um, um, and whereas BIM is another pro apoptotic uh, member. Um, and in fact, uh, knockout studies have shown that it BIM plays an important role in the survival of granulocytes. Now, um, NF kappa B is playing an important role in the process uh, uh, in uh, 2 NF kappa B activation has been shown to increase T cell survival and therefore, if you inhibit NF kappa B there is increase in ROS, um, there is increase in BIM and uh, you have increase in, in T cell death. Um, there are some other uh, uh, molecules that are important. So, for example, um, you have uh, BAD uh, which is also uh, uh, pro apoptotic and you have uh, then you have the IAPs or the inhibitors of apoptotic proteins uh, which these uh, inhibitors they actually bind and inhibit caspases. So, they are inhibitors of uh, caspases. Um, um, then you have SMARC and Diablo which are released from the mitochondria during apoptosis these activate caspases and it relieves the inhibition by the inhibitors of apoptosis. Okay. So, by and large as was mentioned that you have uh, this pathway is uh, uh, or, or uh, the apoptotic uh, pathway is um, is uh, caspase uh, dependent. However, under some circumstances you have uh, caspase independent apoptosis too and some of the molecules uh, that are important um, during caspase independent uh, um, uh, apoptosis have been identified one of which is apoptosis inducing factor which is a 57 um, uh, KDA protein um, which induces programmed cell death chromatin condensation in a caspase independent manner. The other one is endonucleosg. Um, which results in uh, nucleosomal fragmentation even in the presence of uh, caspase inhibitors. Then you have HTRA omni as a serine protease as a mediator of caspase independent death that is released from the mitochondria. So, you had you have these different molecules um, which, uh, uh, which result in caspase independent apoptosis. Um, okay, um, now, the killing of uh, of CTL targets is important is, is important for T cell function and uh, is uh, independent of uh, caspases um, and, and why is it independent of caspases primarily because of two particular proteins uh, the one is perforins the other is granzymes. We had briefly touched upon it in, um, in, in, in some of our uh, previous classes and I think I will just go a little bit in, in slightly greater detail over here because it directly relates to T cell function. Um, and since we are in this area of death I think it is important to know uh, what are the mechanisms associated with how CTLs actually kill um, um, uh, target cells. So, uh, why is this, uh, is this important because it is important for killing of uh, virally uh, infected uh, uh, targets and tumor cells. Uh, CTL binding on uh, target cells um, 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 leads to exocytic release of perforins and granzymes. Now, and, and what are perforins? Perforins are these pore, uh, these for, form pores. So, once you have interaction of between the CTL and uh, the target, then you have uh, pores being formed so that now um, these um, these contents from these granules can be released from the CTLs into the target cell. Okay. Um, what is important is the granules in CTLs are unlike lysosomes and these contents lead to target cell apoptosis. So, um, um, so, uh, uh, so, so it is important uh, to understand what are the intracellular uh, contents of these granules. But before that we will look into perforins and these uh, po polymerize and form uh, transfer membrane pores uh, that allow the contents of the granules to be inserted. Now, um, 
what happens to patients if they lack perforin? And in fact, they, there's a particular disease that is known as familial uh, hemophagocytic uh, lymphohistocytosis. Um, so, uh, they, oh, in these patients that there is no uh, T cell or NK cell cytotoxicity. And uh, these patients have fever, splenomegaly, splenomegaly means inflammation of the spleen. Um, and uh, there is proliferation of immune cells again because the, the immune regulatory mechanism is somewhat uh, compromised. Okay? So, so, there is a major problem in patients again that have mutations in perforin which affect the function of perforin and uh, or uh, they lack perforin. Um, so, the other uh, important aspect that one needs to uh, understand is granzymes and perform perforins are important not only for uh, NK cell uh, for, uh, for CTL killing, but the same mechanisms hold true for natural uh, NK cell killing. So, basically if you do not have uh, uh, perforins, um, uh, what happens is uh, your two arms are compromised which is your CTL arm is compromised and your NK uh, cell arm is compromised. Okay. So, next, uh, next one we will go on to the granzymes um, and the granzymes are you know constitute a larger chunk of uh, these uh, these contents uh, in in cells and they are abundant uh, they are cytine uh, serine proteases and uh, you know you there are different uh, you have five different members in humans 10 in mice um, they activate multiple cell death pathways so um, again they are th these are they are doing it in a caspase independent ma manner because they themselves uh, are are the are proteases which can which can do this and so they can cleave uh, uh, mitochondrial proteins, they can again uh, cleave nuclear proteins, they cleave uh, DNA damage uh, repair proteins especially one important one which is uh, PARP uh, um, which uh, is often used as a marker again for cell death to know um, um, you know the PARP cleavage is associated with cell death and that is often uh, studied. So, granzymes are able to do all these. Uh, so, one of the questions that I had is you have these CTLs um, that are having all these vacuoles, um, the, uh, these, um, these, these granules which contain all this toxic uh, material, what makes them, um, um, uh, how, how is it that these CTLs are, are able to resist uh, the killing themselves because certainly the contents of the granules kill target cells, but what about uh, the CTLs themselves? Now, it turns out that CTLs have a large amounts of inhibitors of these granzymes known as serpents which will uh, which inhibit uh, the uh, function of uh, granzymes. So, basically what happens is CTLs themselves are somewhat resistant to the action of these granzymes and so th and therefore, uh, the target cells do not have uh, high amounts of these serpents and therefore, once uh, the these granzymes uh, get into uh, the target cell cytosol, it causes, uh, it causes a great amount of uh, damage uh, leading to uh, death. Okay. Uh, an important aspect that we need to consider is you have let us say in the thymus, you have large amounts of uh, uh, apoptosis going on. Um, uh, large amounts of cells do not are not able to survive selection and they need to be killed. So, how is it that they are cleared? What are the mechanisms by which they are cleared? And that is an important aspect. So, it turns out that you have both professional um, uh, APCs which is macrophages and dendritic cells as well as uh, non-professional uh, cells um, that are involved in this uh, clearing mechanism. Um, and the uh, there are different uh, processes that are involved here and I will briefly go over them. The first is apoptotic cells uh, uh, release what is known as find me signals um, which is ATP, uh, lysophosphatidylcholine, um, um, uh, uh, a chemokine known as a CX3 uh, uh, CL which are sensed by, by phagocytes uh, by and these phagocytes are motile. So, they can go uh, once this is released. So, by, by a concentration gradient they are able to sense it and they go into and try and find these uh, phagocytic cells. What happens then is uh, there is a subsequent contact between the dying cells and the phagocytes and this is mediated by uh, what is known as eat me signals. Um, so, I had eat me signals or eat me flags and we had discussed one, uh, one such uh, flag which is known as phosphatidyl serine and it was one of the basis for detection of apoptotic cells. Uh, subsequently, uh, you have activation of a small uh, uh, GTPS known as RAC you have cytosolic uh, uh, reorganization and it allows uh, for the uh, for the apoptotic uh, cells to be internalized so so there are different processes involved in clearance of apoptotic uh, cells and this is i think uh, an important aspect 
that again one needs to uh, look into. This is a sort of a, a pictorial representation of this. So, you have this particular cell that uh, is undergoing death and this is engulfed by the neighboring cell and uh, this often happens and it uh, the corpse is digested and uh, it leaves no trace. So, there is no evidence that uh, you know that you have all these uh, processes that are occurring. Okay. And this was uh, mentioned that you have these apoptotic cells which uh, which uh, which express eat me flags such as phosphatidylserine. You have other ones also um, um, that is expressed. Um, now, how are these recognized? There are two main uh, ways by which they can be recognized. Phosphatidylserine, for example, um, can be uh, 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 can be uh, um, uh, 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 bound by bridging molecules um, and uh, one of which uh, uh, there are several and one of which uh, is the milk fat uh, globulin uh, EGF factor 8 uh, molecule. So, what happens is they bridge. So, they bind to uh, phosphatidylserine, they bridge and then now this they attach it to some other molecules which sort of recognize it and can take it up. Um, the other is phosphatidylserine can be specifically bound by particular for, uh, you know receptors that recognize it and there are several again over here you have brain specific angiotensin or uh, BAL1, you have stibilin 2 and you have the TIM proteins TIM1 and TIM4 that will recognize phosphatidylserine and they will ingest it. Okay. Now, um, moving on um, to the other molecules uh, that are important in uh, the clearance of this, uh, you have uh, the MER uh, receptor, uh, MER is a uh, tyrosine um, uh, kinase and this is important in the clearance of uh, apoptotic uh, uh, cells. You have different molecules that is involved over here, I am sort of uh, running um, uh, through uh, uh, them down. You have CD31 on uh, macrophages um, uh, which uh, results in increased uh, phagocytosis. Uh, I, had, I had mentioned uh, the milk fat globulin uh, EGF factor 8 which binds to phosphatidylserine um, but and these are complexes are phagocytes by macrophages. There are ultimate, there are multiple uh, phosphatidyl binding uh, receptors um, uh, CD14, um, CD36. Uh, CD14 is something that again we had uh, uh, we had uh, looked up uh, uh, during our uh, uh, initial classes on innate uh, immunity. Now, uh, you then you have scavenger receptors. Now, scavenger receptors are ones that uh, sort of bind to oxidized uh, um, LDL um, uh, pro um, uh, proteins um, and um, these uh, you have different types of scavenger receptors. Again CD36 uh, and these are macrophage uh, scavenging receptors, they bind to all different types of molecules and their job is to basically scavenge um, and these are also important. Uh, and scavenger receptors are also part of the mechanisms by which uh, apoptotic cells are recognized and they are sort of uh, cleared out. Uh, um, now, uh, I, will, I will show a particular cartoon over here to sort of tell about uh, why this is important. So, what is shown over here is you have ma scavenger receptors on macrophages. Okay? Now, and these bind to alpha macroglobulin in one case. Now, in one case if they bind to alpha uh, uh, globulin which is you know which is uh, secreted by apoptotic cells and it suppresses the immune response. On the other hand, if uh, the cells burst open uh, and uh, uh, you have intracellular contents being released and for example, they, these scavenger receptors bind heat shock proteins, then they activate the macrophages and it results in necrosis. So, this is where you have a single receptor that can bind to a particular one, let us say alpha um, uh, microglobin, they suppress immune responses or they bind to heat shock proteins, they activate macrophages and resulting in, in necrosis. So, you, you uh, what is shown over here is depending on what these molecules bind, um, uh, bind to, you can get different responses. Um, and uh, this is uh, important because it is also important in terms of regulation of apoptosis versus uh, necrosis. So, uh, I will uh, briefly, I uh, will try and summarize this uh, class is uh, an important class on T cell survival and, uh, and death. Um, um, and we so we will just the, go over some of the important aspects. So the first thing is we talked about the importance of cell death. There are different types of uh, cell death. Uh, uh, you have necrosis, and necrosis results in inflammation. That's the most important thing. Um, and you have rupture of the plasma membrane as a result of which intracellular contents are released. So that's the, that's an important thing. Um, uh, whereas in apoptosis, what happens is you have outer membrane permeabilization, but there is no rupture of the um, of the plasma membrane. So, the apoptotic bodies uh, are sort of uh, are, are sort of ingested as, uh, as, as apoptotic bodies without release of the intracellular contents. So, it is a very efficient process by which uh, this occurs. 
um, you then you have uh, autophagy, autophagy is sort of self eating you have these giant uh, vacuoles that sort of develop um, during starvation and they sort of the cells sort of eat themselves up, but uh, you know they do not release their intracellular contents and so these the apoptosis and autophagy are the two important uh, players or pathways involved in program cell death. Now, we also talked about the pathways in program cell death, uh, there are two main ones, the one is the extrinsic pathway which release uh, which, uh, which uh, relies on uh, the FAS, uh, um, FAS, uh, FAS cell and the TNF receptor um, and the other is the intrinsic pathway which gets turned on when the cells are stressed. Um, and activation of these uh, pathways result in activation of different types of caspases uh, in terms of the intrinsic it is the caspase 9, the extrinsic is the caspase 8. Um, remember the caspases are made as a pro form and they need to be cleaved into the mature form and you have different processes that are involved over here. They finally um, it results in activation of the effector, ca effector caspases and then subsequently you have the outer um, membrane permeabilization of the mitochondria and uh, once these caspases the effector caspases are released you have other processes is occurring too. So, cytoskeleton proteins are, are, in cre are, are, are cleaved, you have um, a nuclear lamins being cleaved, so the nuclear envelope um, is damaged um, and you have uh, um, DNAs is being activated as a result of which the genomic integrity is lost. So, you have all these different processes that are occurring and that one needs to be a little bit aware of. Um, now, um, the, we it is also important uh, to uh, to understand the roles of fast facel and the best way to look at it is to look at mutations or people uh, or mice where the, the it is a null mutation or you have some other mutations by which these, uh, these molecules uh, cannot uh, associate um, and uh, form uh, uh, active uh, complex. Um, and uh, so, in, in, uh, in case of fast facel uh, people have a sp a splenomegaly, they have hepatomegaly, uh, they have increase in numbers of uh, um, in the size of their immune organs because you have large number of these immune cells which, which cannot die um, and, and which uh, they are around which results in autoimmune, uh, in autoimmune disease. We also discussed uh, the importance of the BCL family of members, uh, of BCL family members. Now, there are two main types of uh, BCL family members, you have the pro-apoptotic and the anti-apoptotic. Um, the, the two major ones that play important role in, uh, in resisting apoptosis is BCL2 and BCL XL um, and the, the, they are the main ones um, and the pro-apoptotic there are several of them, uh, BIM, BACS, BAC and some of these result in, uh, in permeabilization of uh, the outer membrane in the, um, in the mitochondria. So, you have cytochrome C coming up uh, out and then formation cytochrome C gets together with DATP and APF1 to form the apoptosome which will activate the caspase uh, um, 9 pathway and we talked about the role of BID which, uh, which sort of links uh, uh, these, uh, these two um, the intrinsic and the extrinsic pathways. Okay. Um, we also talked about caspases, now you have the two main types the initiator and the effector caspases, uh, I talked about a little bit about the functions of these, caspase 8 is uh, for the intrinsic pathway primarily involved in the, uh, the extrinsic pathway sorry and the caspase 9 is in the intrinsic pathway, you have the effect of caspases and we talked about their different roles, a apart from mitochondria they have uh, uh, they activate uh, nucleases, uh, they degrade uh, uh, cytoskeletal proteins, they degrade uh, um, nuclear lamins. Um, uh, now, uh, the mitochondria is really the main player down here. The outer membrane um, permeabilization of the mitochondria is almost a signal uh, once that happens it cannot the cell cannot go back the cell is destined for apoptosis and so therefore the integrity of the of the of the mitochondria is is really important and the integrity of the mitochondria the main players that are there are actually the bcl family of, uh, of proteins uh, which which play important roles in either maintaining or enhancing uh, death uh, and the way they do it uh, there, there are different mechanisms by which uh, by which they do it, and they are clearly the really the important players um, uh, in this in this process. Um, um, then, once you have so much death, you have quite a lot of death going on. Uh, what are the mechanisms by which uh, uh, by which they are they are cleared? Um, and we talked about the different mechanisms. You have uh, you have signals being sent out. Uh, um, uh, like ATP, uh, lysophosphatidylcholine, and uh, these are sort of sensed by phagocytes, uh, um, by and so so they come towards um, 
um, these apoptotic cells and then you have binding of this between uh, be, which you have these signals again sent off by apoptotic cells phosphatidylserine is a good example of it um, and then um, you have uh, um, you have activation of the RAC uh, GTPases uh, and then you have cytoskeleton reorganization and then ultimately these are uh, phagocytosed. Uh, so, um, uh, we also discussed uh, uh, the importance of uh, of uh, mutations in two of the uh, the genes, uh, fast facile it results in uh, in Kennel Smith uh, syndrome, and we talked about the autoimmune uh, uh, disease that it uh, it uh, it results in. We also talked about perforin. Now mutations in perforin, um, which re which is important for uh, CTL uh, um, uh, uh, cytotoxicity because it forms pores. Uh, it uh, it results in um, inhibition of CTL as well as NK cell function, and this greatly compromises the host. As a, and there are immuno regulatory problems as a result of which you have autoimmune because it seems to be activated. Um, um, we also talked about granzymes and I think I will uh, end uh, over here, thank you.